Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic graph theory. Today we'd like to talk more about eigenvalues because eigenvalues. Do I need to explain why eigenvalues are good? Eigenvalues are awesome. If you don't know what eigenvalues are, you should learn about eigenvalues. Just kidding. Uh, we continue our story about eigenvalues. Again, because eigenvalues are just fabulous. So there was this fabulous statement that essentially pass counting is the same as computing eigenvalues. So we should compute the eigenvalues of certain graphs. So right now we are only playing with the maximal eigenvalues as Perron Frobenius eigenvalue, but eventually we like to play with other eigenvalues as well. So why not compute the whole spectrum um, or spectra in general, which is just a set of eigenvalues. And really, um, I just show you computations today and eventually we'll do something with those computations. So next time there will be a classification result depending on eigenvalues, which is one of my favorite classification results ever because it kind of is very surprising. It's kind of a very surprising statement. But first let's look at eigenvalues of some graph examples. So kind of the easiest graphs. I would really just consider the easiest graphs. What are the easiest graph? Well, you can be, can be a very generous graph. Well, you are, you are a graph, I'm a graph, we're all graphs. And you can be a very generous graph, uh, like the complete graph. And the complete graph is just saying you have a certain number of vertices. So six here in my example, and n in general, those six vertices, I just marked them for you. Uh, one, two, three, five, six. And we are very generous. So everything is connected to everything. Yeah, so we have lots of edges. So here, let me draw a smaller example. So here's K3. So everything should be connected to everything. So it will be a triangle. Um, K4, let me draw K4 as well. It's not the square because everything is supposed to be connected with everything. And right now here, my top vertex, uh, my top left vertex and my bottom right vertex, they're very lonely. So let's connect them and same here. And that would be K4. So this is K4. And this is K3, just a complete graph on the number of vertices. Keep in mind, the slogan is very generous. So everything is connected to everything, right? And well, we want to count paths in this beast. And yeah, well, since everything is connected to everything, there should be quite a few paths. So a, a lot of them actually. And this is something you can actually just tell by look at the spectrum. So the spectrum has a lot of minus ones, ignore them. And then there's one eigenvalue, which is very, very large compared to everything else of size n minus one. And if we remember our pass counting, then the number of paths should roughly grow like this, which is a uh, ridiculous. So this is, let me ignore the minus one. So this is essentially something like a growth of like n, or, uh, n to the n. So n to the n, that, that, that grows really, really fast. Okay as Hamo expected. And you can see that in the spectrum. So the spectrum is really simple. A lot of minus ones. So this is just, this is not to the power of min n minus one, this is a multiplicity. So you have one eigenvalue n minus one and n minus one eigenvalue is minus one. And the eigenvector is also very, very simple. So the growth rate of pass is really roughly about n to the n. This is kind of as bad as it gets, right? Uh, n to the n growth rate of, of the number of pass. That's pretty fast. Um, and kind of the complete opposite, uh, uh, complete graph, and now the complete opposite uh, is we be as conservative as possible. So we only co connect things, well, in a minimal way and kind of connecting vertices in a minimal way so that they are still connected would be drawing a line. So here P6, uh, so this was P7, sorry. P6, P7, uh, P1, P2, P3, P4, and so on. Really a line, the past graph Pn. And now we expect very, very few paths in Pn. There's essentially nothing you can do, right? You can go back and forth, essentially. Um, and indeed, the, the spectrum is really, really tiny. So the Pf eigenvalue is smaller than 2. So the growth rate here of paths is really, really tiny. It's a bit slower than 2 to the n. So there are quite a very few paths. But usually gross rates of pass is really fast and this is kind of as slow as it gets and it's still about two to the n. So it, it still grows quite fast in some sense at least. Anyway, you can write down the eigenvalues very explicitly and there are these famous numbers here. It kind of, nah, I should get rid of the k here. So these famous numbers here, which don't look very famous, but they actually are. This is cos, these cosine numbers that turn up in everywhere in geometry, um, kind of pop out of the blue. And whenever you see them, it's somehow related to the past graph and to um, 
well, the eigenvalues and the gross rates of uh, of uh, the pass in the pass graph, the gross rates of pass in the pass graph. That's a, a mouthful. Anyway, I hope you get the point. And this is kind of the slowest possible. We'll come back to that in the next video. The slowest possible gross rate for, for a connected graph. So kind of these numbers are very special. They are kind of the minimal type of numbers possible. We'll see them again. I'm going to ignore the PF eigenvalue, uh, eigenvector for this video, uh, but it's very explicitly uh, written. It's not hard to write it down. Okay, so here, n minus one grows ridiculously fast. And this one kind of doesn't really depend on n. So it always stays below two, the PF eigenvector, while this kind of gets the PF eigenvalue, while this, of course, gets as big as you want. Kind of the really two extremes um, of, of graph theory, if you want. And here are some examples of the spectra of small graphs. Um, so as you can see, it kind of, whatever those numbers are, so tau is around 1.6, here's my tau. Um, rho is about 2.5, so here's my rho. And the, the zetas are the roots of this polynomial, so the biggest one is around 2.5. Uh, one seven. So here's rho. And small graphs ignore the non-connected ones. So let's ignore the non-connected ones. This is non-connected, 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 non-connected. Let me see non-connected. The rest is connected. If you just look at the connected ones, you'll see some pattern. So it's quite difficult for uh, the peron Frobenius eigenvalue to be smaller, smaller, let me just say smaller or equal to two. So here, the Perron Frobenius eigenvalue is small or equal to two. Here it is, but this is still a line graph. It's some sense a line graph. It's a circle. But anyway, this is a line graph, and square root of two is smaller than two. If you, in case you were not aware, square root of two is smaller than two. And we don't count this one. We don't count this one. Here, this is not a line graph. And you immediately see that this doesn't work because the Perron Frobenius eigenvalue is bigger than three. Here, rho uh, bigger than two. Rho is also bigger than two. And again, it's not a line graph. Um, this, let me count this as a line graph. Here, again, the whatever it is, is bigger than two, and it's not a line graph. Here, square root of three, in case you're not aware, square root of three is smaller than two. Um, it is, believe me. Um, and this is kind of fun, because this graph is not a line graph. It looks, it looks like this. Well, very strange. So here's a line graph. Let me give it a question mark. Here's a line graph as a Perron Frobenius, a non line graph where the Perron Frobenius eigenvalue is smaller than three. And in the next video, I will do something with that. And uh, oh, this one is not connected. I need to cross it out. This one is not connected. So for all connected ones, they are up to this funny question mark thing. Either line graphs, if they have Frobenius eigenvalue um, smaller than this, circles, so line graphs, pass graphs circles, or there's this funny exception. And maybe we can do something with this. Um, but you can already see here, there are really not many graphs where the Perron Fibinius eigenvalue is small. So in general, well, in this case, there are quite a few graphs because it's a small case. It only goes up to three vertices, four vertices. As soon as you go to more vertices, most graphs are not not circles or line graphs anymore. And usually the Fibinius Perron eigenvalue gets pretty, pretty large which tells you something about kind of the minimal growth rate we can possibly see in a line graph and general graphs just have a really, really large growth rate. So general graphs are, let me say, random graphs are really more like uh, complete graphs and the Perron Fabini's eigenvalue is usually very big. Anyway, so those are kind of examples here. And I would like to draw your attention to um, Perron Fabini's eigenvalue being small or equal to two because that's really rare. In most cases, it's large, and large means large growth. Um, anyway, so as we will see in kind of the first part of this lecture series, will be that a lot of properties of the graph, we will see more, we've already seen uh, the pass counting, actually are determined by the spectrum. So here's something funny. Um, this, you could ask then the question, OK, the spectrum is cool. We'll see lots of properties that can be determined by the spectrum. Easy to compute, that's great. Uh, maybe it's perfect in a kind of a perfect graph invariant. Sadly, it's not. So core spectral would mean uh, two graphs that are not the same, which have the same spectrum, and they exist. So here are two core spectral graphs. So if you stare at those, well, it's not really a staring exercise. It's kind of very believable that those two graphs are not the same. But if you would compute the spectrum, you would see that they have exactly the same spectrum. 
So here are the parent for Venus eigenvalue, by the way, is four, and this is very far away from any type of line graph. Anyway, so the whole point of the first part of this lecture series is that the spectrum, which is really easy to compute, contains a lot of information about the graph, but it's not perfect. And that's good. Why? Because if it would be perfect, it wouldn't tell us too much. It wouldn't simplify problems in some sense, because if it would be equivalent to graph problems, it's just equivalent to graph problems, so it's equally hard. But we lose something by looking at spectrum, so we also gain a bit of speed and gain a bit of power, for example. And a good example was, um, now we have two core spectral graphs, so the gross rates of their um, paths will be the same, but maybe the graphs that don't need to be the same. That's pretty cool. Anyway, um, here's the first surprising application of the spectrum. And I really find that really, really surprising. It's related to the automorphism group of a graph. So a group acts on the graph by just permuting the vertices such that adjacencies of edges um, keep to be the same. All right, so for example, for a graph like Kn, the symmetry group is just all of Sn because everything is connected to everything. So you don't need to worry about adjacencies and you just can permute all the vertices. But here, for example, the only thing you can do is, well, Z mod two. So you can either do nothing, that's a perfect symmetry, that's a perfect group action on the path graph, or you do this operation, um, just flipping the graph along kind of a vertical axis or something along the middle uh, uh, y, y axis, I guess. Why? Because you need to preserve connectivity. So this thing has to go to something which has one uh, adjacent vertex as well. So you don't have any other choice. Anyway, so um, kind of two extremes. These two graphs are two extremes of one another. One of them is a really, really small, like Z mod two automorphism group. The other one is a really, really large uh, automorphism group. I mean, this grows like n factorial, which is really, really large. And they're kind of really the opposite. Anyway. And here comes a very, very, I think, very absolutely beautiful application of the spectrum. So let's say the spectrum is simple. That just means every eigenvalue appears exactly once. Pretty easy to check. Um, so here, it's clearly not a simple spectrum. It has this guy appearing four times. Uh, here, let's go to this one. This is a simple spectrum. So every eigenvalue is, is just unique. And this is clearly not a simple spectrum again. So this one appears quite often. Anyway, so if you have a simple spectrum, easy to check, then the automorphism graph is always a two group. So something like Z mod two, higher powers of Z mod two, something like that. A group of order uh, two to the K, for some K, group of order two to the K. So this one is clearly not a two group, and the spectrum is not simple, and this is kind of an if and only if, and here spectrum is simple, and you have a two group. And it's kind of very surprising because somehow, computing the spectrum, which is a linear algebra exercise, knows something about the automorphism group of the graph. And I think that's a, a, a pretty cool application, a really first, second cool application. The first one was pass counting, second cool application of the spectrum. This one uses the whole spectrum. The pass counting only used the Perron Fabinius eigenvalue. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video because we will kind of go along in the spirit that some, some linear algebra properties will tell you quite a lot about the graph. And I also hope to see you next time.